Good evening. You are very welcome as we continue to, to gather together for the 15th evening in this Lenten series of Praying with the Psalms. And tonight we will be reflecting and reading on Psalm 65. So it's lovely if you are able to have a Bible to look at and whether that is a paper version or is on any one of the various devices that is available to you. And another option is to tap on the link to Bible Gateway, which you can find along with this video. And this will take you directly to tonight's psalm, which is from the NIV version. So to help us settle into this time together, the candle here will be lit. And if you have one at home, please light it at the same time. So let's begin. We light this candle and we ask that the warmth of this will reassure us through the Holy Spirit of the presence of Jesus in our homes and that the light that breaks through the darkness will give us peace and hope in our lives. And we continue to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit by encouraging a sense of stillness within ourselves. So relax our shoulders and by putting aside any thoughts about what has happened during the day. Breathing slowly in and out. Let the Holy Spirit come into our homes and be aware as it settles into our hearts, into our minds, of the gentle yet deep love of Jesus and help us focus on Jesus to be aware of what he wants to say to each of us tonight. Heavenly Father, I welcome you here in my home, in my life, in my heart, and so hand over anything I know that is not pleasing to you, and so can then fully return to you and have a clearer vision of what you desire for my life and how I can be a blessing to others, which will be a witness to your love and grace. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Do we feel like praising tonight and is that a yes? or not so much, or just no. And this is not a tick or an X answer. The answer will vary in how we feel tonight and how we feel we want to honestly say how we feel. It's about feelings, and that's okay. We are all surely having a roller coaster of feelings this past year. In the Psalms written by David, that we have been reading about in the last weeks have certainly described the tumultuous time that David was experiencing. Many times we have heard him cry out to God saying, where are you? Why are you allowing these things to happen to me? Why do you not answer my prayer? Hear my prayer. I hunger and I thirst for you. But in the middle of the rough seas of life, he admits, though perhaps not always totally earnestly, possibly tongue-in-cheek or reluctantly. But David does declare that God is with him and God will sort things out. God understands how we can struggle and feel worn out and weary. But there is a recipe. Acknowledge God, even in the depths of despair. Is that easy? No. Is it possible? David certainly didn't always feel like it or probably didn't want to. He was a human just like us. But he did manage in the midst of turmoil to make statements such as in Psalm 52. I will hope in your name for your name is good. And did he at that point truly mean it and truly feel it? Well, only David can answer that. But God knew whether he did or not. But even so, 
God stuck by David throughout his life. And Psalm 65 tonight is a, a song of praise. And it carries on from the last verse in Psalm 64, which was shared with us last night by Michael, and says, The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. All the upright in heart will glorify in him. And that encourages us to praise God. And then Psalm 65 describes why to praise and gives examples of what to praise God for. And it starts with an offering of praise. It says, praise awaits you, God, and does acknowledge that God answers prayer. Then the psalm details three things for which we can praise God. It tells us that God saves. Saves us when we are overwhelmed. Saves us when we sin. God forgives our sin when we ask sincerely. The psalm tells of the blessing of having access to God. And in the Old Testament, it was only the Levite priests who, on behalf of the people, could enter the inner sacred rooms through the curtain to where God resided. But as New Testament people, we are truly blessed because of the death of Jesus on the cross. We have personal access to God's presence everywhere and at any time. And the psalm also tells us that God is powerful. And this shows through creation, the, the mighty mountains, the power to still the roaring seas, and the dawn that comes which rolls back the dark of the night. His power also shows when he comes against those who dare to try and rule the world. And the third is that God is a provider. He gives us plenty of good things through the land, water for the crops. We don't always like the rain, but we need it for growth. And there is a lovely description of the water softening the ridges, which are the lumps of soil or clods, which need level down. And this could also portray what God can do in our lives. We are not perfect, but we can be a work in progress, aiming to know God better, to know his desires and plans for each of us. Jesus, the carpenter, would have worked with wood, which was rough with notches and sharp edges. And he needed to reshape this into something that was more pleasing to the eye and which would also be of use and benefit to others. The work of Jesus was always a labour of love, as is his desire to mould into the person he knows we can be. The last few verses of the psalm tell of the generosity of God, the abundance that he has to shower down upon us. In David's time, they had just had three years of famine, but there were better days ahead, when they could, with a grateful and thankful heart, truly shout for joy and sing. And the challenge is to have the will, the desire to praise God in the famine times for the blessed things he has done for us, accepting that it can lift us up because he is always with us. So let us read the psalm together and as we do, hold on to the thoughts that God is our saviour he is all-powerful and he gives generously. And we will pause for silence at the end of the psalm before we pray together. Psalm 65 Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. 
God, our Saviour, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the Father's sea, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that you continually care for us. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given us and also for those that you have in store for us. We pray that we will always have hope in our hearts, as hope is the life jacket that keeps us afloat, and that within that hope you will hear our prayer. When we go through difficult times, we can feel that you are at a distance. But as a song cries out, we too can cry out to God. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, is all I'm asking of you. You give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. God will surely give you what you need, one day at a time. And Lord, we think of all those around the world who are struggling with the pandemic, not enough medical care, lack of vaccines added to their lack of food and water. We pray provision for them, for hope, and strength for them and give thanks for the many agencies that are working in these countries endeavouring to provide for their needs and we pray that governments will be fair honest and committed to ensuring that their people regardless of creed or colour will be equally treated and we pray for all the Christians around the world who are being persecuted may you be their shelter and place a hedge of protection around them. We thank you for their courage and their willingness to give up their life rather than deny you. Help those who are struggling and are afraid that they know that you love them and understand how they are feeling. Give them strength to continue to carry on their faith. And we pray for our own government and all the specialists who work together to bring a healing resolution to the fight against coronavirus. May they have wisdom, clarity and unity for the many decisions that need to be made and continued energy and strength to keep going. And our prayer for those who know you as their Lord and Saviour and those who have not yet made that commitment is that we would know you, Jesus, more clearly love you more dearly and follow you more nearly. Amen. And we finish as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And thank you for joining us tonight and we look forward to being with you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And may the light of God surround you. May the love of God enfold you. May the power of God protect you. And may the presence of God watch over you. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. <laughs>